All right, so over the last couple of years, I became a father. And don't worry, I'm not here to brag about my kids or show them off or anything like that. <laughs> okay, maybe just a little. But being a father got me thinking, how much does my parenting impact the behaviors and mental processes of my kids? And how much of it is influenced by their genetics? Luckily for me, the first unit of AP Psychology can help. So today we are going to start to explore this question as we learn about the interaction of heredity and environment. Now when you hear the term heredity, think of nature. This is genetics, the predisposed characteristics that influence an individual's physical, behavioral, and mental traits and processes. And when you think of environment, think of nurture. This is the external factors that an individual experiences, such as a person's family, their friends, school, and other societal factors. Oh, and real quick, before before we go on, I should mention that if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of the important concepts in this video, make sure you click the link in the description and get my guided notes. All right, so we now have an understanding of heredity and the environment, but I still don't have an answer to my question. And I'm curious to know if it is heredity or the environment that led to such magical family moments like this. Now, we could look at this question through the evolutionary perspective, which focuses on natural selection, the passing down of genes, and how many of our behaviors and mental processes actually come from our ancestors. For instance, many of our fear responses, such as the fear of heights or spiders, may come from our past. Avoiding dangerous animals or situations that could cause us harm allows us to stay out of harm's way, so these responses get passed on to future generations to help keep us safe. We could even look at how us as human beings bond with others as possible evidence of the passing on of certain behaviors. Cooperating with others and having close friend groups increased early humans' chances of survival. When people are in groups, they are able to be better protected, share resources, and have support systems, which allow individuals to thrive and grow. Individuals such as Charles Darwin, who actually wasn't a psychologist, heavily influenced the evolutionary perspective. Darwin published a book titled The Origin of species, which talked about natural selection and the theory of evolution, which states that evolution happens by natural selection. Humans and animals pass on specific traits that help them survive to their offspring, while traits that do not help the species survive would not be passed on. This became the foundation for the evolutionary perspective. Unfortunately, some individuals and groups have taken the evolutionary perspective and tried to apply it in ways that discriminate against other individuals, such as eugenics, which is the belief in improving the genetic quality of the human population by promoting the reproduction of individuals with desirable traits, and discouraging or preventing reproduction among those with traits deemed undesirable. We actually already talked about this in an example in our Unit Zero videos, when we discussed Henry Goddard, who was an American eugenicist who pushed to use intelligence tests to rank people into different mental categories, later going on to use that test to argue that society should prevent people that were found to be feeble-minded from having children either through sterilization or isolation. Now, since we talked about the evolutionary perspective, I do want to note that each of the different psychological perspectives have a different view on the nature versus nurture debate. We can see that depending on the perspective, they may lean more towards the nature side or more towards the nurture side. If you need a quick recap on any of these perspectives, you can check out my psychological perspective video after you finish this video. Now, one of the ways we could try to better understand the influence from nature or nurture is by looking at heritability, which is a mathematical measure to estimate how much variation there is in a population related to its genes. Notice here I said population. These estimates only apply to populations and not individual people. For instance, if the heritability for a trait is 0.7, that means 70% of variations of the trait in a population is caused by genetics and 30% is due to the environment. 
Her red abilities can range anywhere from zero to one. Later in this course, we will talk about reciprocal determinism, which connects back to this discussion, but that is for another day. So if we look at her ability, we can see that it is not nature or nurture, rather it is nature and nurture. Both her ability and the environment shape individuals' behaviors and mental processes. So I guess those special family memories are due to my parenting style, the environment I create, and my kids' predisposed characteristics, such as their temperament. Philip, come on. All right, now when trying to understand this balance, we can turn our focus onto the study of epigenetics, which examines how the environment and a person's behaviors affect a person's genes and how they work. Notice here though, I said how your genes work. The focus is on how the body reads a DNA sequence. The DNA itself is not changing. Epigenetics happens slowly. Your genes are essentially being turned on or off due to sustained environmental pressures. This is not something that happens because of one situation. One concept some students get confused with when talking about epigenetics is plastic. Plasticity. This is when the brain changes and builds new neural pathways in response to a person's experiences. We'll go more into plasticity later in this unit when we talk about the brain. Now, one way researchers have studied the impact of heredity and the environment on behaviors and mental processes is through twin studies, adoption studies, and family studies, such as the Swedish Adoption Twin Study on Aging, which was a long-term study that focused on how genetics and the environment affected aging. The study focused on twins who were separated at birth and raised in different families, as well as twins who were raised together. Researchers wanted to see how the participants in health, personality, and habits differed over the years. To do this, researchers collected data through questionnaires and in-person tests, all of which focused on health, memory, and cognitive abilities. The study had seven rounds of testing and found that participants' genes and the environment impacted the participants' personality, health, and health-related behaviors, further supporting the idea that it's not nature or nurture, but nature and nurture. So it seems like my original question was a little bit more complicated than just a simple answer. But hopefully now you have a better understanding of heredity and the environment. Remember, if you need more help with your AP Psychology class, check out my Ultimate Review Packet. It is one of the best online resources to help get you an A in your class and a five on that AP National exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.